Drac Pack was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid, and it's great that it's available on DVD, but we would like to have it in a little higher resolution. Maybe we'll use a little of that cool AI upsampling to go ahead and convert one of these episodes. And today I'm going to show you how not only just how to upscale, but we're also going to rip this disc, deprotect it, deinterlace it, and then pick the best possible model to upscale it. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got the disc inserted and now we need to uh, check if this thing is copy protected. I can tell you already it is, but opening up the video folder, finding the first uh, one VOB file here. We'll double click that, open it in VLC. Yeah, it's protected, <laughs> obviously, right? So we are going to have to deprotect it using a tool. We have two of them that we could use here, DVD Fab Pass, Key Light. Um, there is a light free version of this, which does do older copy protections, which would probably work in our case. Uh, and it's 80 bucks uh, for the full version. Any DVD HD is another great tool, um, but it is also extraordinarily pricey. So for a lifetime uh, subscription to this guy, uh, it's gonna set you back 110 euro versus 80 for uh, one year. But let's see what we got here for um, Let's see what it cost us for a lifetime of pass key. Lifetime is 120 US dollars. So not cheap. It's going to cost you a hundred bucks, over a hundred bucks for either tool. But as I mentioned before, um, pass key light may take care of business for you. So we're going to use pass key because that's what I have. I actually own it. So let's go ahead and run uh, pass key. And when you run it, it sits in your sys tray and it waits for a disk to be inserted. And as you can see, it's logging into their servers to get the latest protection checks. And um, it is parsing the DVD now. So what we have on that DVD is a content scramble system or CSS. This will happily take it off for us once it's done parsing the disk and looking for any other types of copy protection. It will show up here whenever it's done. There we go. And so now we have more information. You notice Windows now sees it too. Windows is like, hey, I know what this disk is now. So CSS was removed and that's what we're looking for. Content uh, scramble system is removed. Uh, so now if we uh, take a look at that VOB file uh, inside of VLC, yep, looks great. All right, so we know CSS has been taken off of there. And we want to go ahead and make a copy of this onto our local drive. I've already done it to spare us the effort, but the copy that's on your hard drive will now be deprotected. So let's get started with the upscaling. There's a few sort of preliminary things I like to do. So we're going to load Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, and we're going to open up that newly deprotected VOB file. And I would like to find the transformation sequence where the DRAC pack wax their hands together and transforms into the DRAC pack. So this is, this is sort of like a little high action. This is something I always remember from the show. So this is what I want to start with for my, for my, uh, my informational pass here. So I'm going to set an endpoint and an endpoint. So I just get the transform sequence itself. Uh, this is, uh, this is just a little time consuming. So I clipped a little bit of out of there. So now uh, let's take a look at our AI models. Uh, so we start with our video quality. I don't even know if I'd call this low quality. It's probably more along the lines of medium, I would say, because low quality, trust me, I have some low quality ones. Video type progressive, um, okay. We have interlaced, which is probably the case here because it was an old TV show. Um, and we do have CG for computer graphics, which this is not. So let's start with progressive and, and see where we go. We'll do a compare, and this will compare um, all of the uh, major models here, including Artemis, Proteus, and Gaia. And uh, each one will render in turn, so it's rendering them now, and then we'll get a chance to look at it. Okay, so, yeah, all right, so maybe this wasn't the best clip to render. There's just, there's not much to see here. I mean, just, yeah, I think, we, I, think I need to pick another start point before we can properly evaluate that. Let me get something that's a little, I don't know, a little more person friendly. 
There we go. This, uh, that's a good spot, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and preview again. So once again, each of the three models, the Artemis, the Proteus, and Gaia, will all be rendered one at a time. And then we can sit and look at them all together and see which one we like the most. Okay, so now they're all running in real time after being converted. And uh, you can see that the, the purple background here has been, except for a Gaia here, for some reason that just totally grained it up. But for the other two models, it looks it looks pretty good in comparison. Um, the everything else, I'm looking at the face on Frankie. Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, um, there are pluses and minuses to each one of them, and I don't know if I. I mean, the Artemis looks looks probably the best, just kind of shooting from the hip. But unfortunately, we do have an interlacing problem here. Um, we only have one model for deinterlacing. And so let's, um, let's try this one model we have for built-in deinterlacing, and that'll be in the upper right corner, the Dione or Die one however you pronounce that. I'm not a linguist here, obviously. So it's going to show you what that one looks like against two of the other models, the Artemis uh, low and medium. And yeah, yeah, it, it definitely cleans some of that interlacing out, but it's it's kind of still there. So I'm thinking we may have to go ahead and deinterlace the video ourselves. So there's a million and one ways to deinterlace. Uh, I am not going to do this the best way. I'm going to make a copy of this VOB and I'm going to rename it to .mpeg, which in itself is a cheat, and I'm sure I will get uh, comments about it. But the tool that I'm going to use here, which is DVD uh, Fab Toolkit, it doesn't like VOB files. I mean, it, it'll process it, but it has a problem. It's something silly, but I clipped that out. But we're gonna go ahead and, and take our copy, our MPEG, and I'm just gonna run it through the, the default interlacing mode. Again, there are better, more effective tools, uh, and there's almost an art form to deinterlacing video itself. We're gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit through it. But uh, this, will, this will do for a tutorial, right? So we're gonna deinterlace that video file. And then we can bring it back into our, uh, there we go. So there it is. We're going to just rename this because everything has the same name at this point. Drag pack deinterlaced, and then we'll move it to our, the root folder where everything else is. Perfect. So now I've got a deinterlaced MPEG. Let's load that into Topaz. Hello, loaded into Topaz. There we go. All right, cool. So now uh, let's go ahead and reset everything. We'll stay with medium, we'll go with progressive, and then we'll do our, our multi-model compare. Once, of course, we uh, re-establish our start and end points. I'll do that real quick, that, there we go. Yeah, I skipped through everything, that way you don't have to watch me do it. So let's go ahead and do an Artemis medium uh, look at this guy. And yeah, yeah, the, um, the interlacing's gone. Now we have a little bit of ghosting, which does happen with cheap deinterlacing. But if you didn't notice it, good. <laughs> I did. And I'm sure uh, the video professionals that are watching this to make fun of me will also note it as well. So let's go ahead and now we need to compare this again with all of our different models to see where we get the most bang for the buck. Again, we'll use the Artemis, Proteus, and Gaia to decide uh, which one we want to use. Wait for it to all render in real time. There we go. So once again, I'm taking a look here, and you can, by the way, you can scroll this, these little fields around so you can see other pieces of it. And yeah, look at this. So I'm thinking uh, Frankie looks a little bit better in Artemis, um, to be honest with you. I think, um, let's go to Proteus here real quick. You know, I like Proteus because it doesn't mess with anything. It doesn't try to enhance edges. It's really just like a, a plain old upscaling. So it's the same video, except for in higher quality with no loss. And that's what we see here. But we don't have any sort of edge enhancements or it doesn't look better. It just looks the same, but bigger. Now, just to make sure before, as I mentioned in my other videos, uh, Proteus lets, it does have sort of an intelligent setting. So if you click this little lightning bolt on the current frame, it will reset the model parameters into what it thinks that frame needs. And you can do this a few times and even do different parameters in different sections of the video to actually gain improvements. But I'm 
yeah, I mean, again, it is it is bigger with no notable increase in quality. Sometimes that's what you want. Let's try this again in 4K just to see if we get any benefit. Most of the time you don't, but sometimes if you do a 4K upscale, uh, it it gives it a little bit more room to play. I don't know. I'm listen. I'm not an AI genius here. I'm just trying to help you guys get through. So now let's see what the 4K look like. Um, I don't know. I mean, it it looks a little bit better. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to render the whole thing out. We're going to render the Proteus. 4K all the way through. We'll speed this up. Again, we're going to do this at uh, 5X for you to speed things up a little bit. Um, of course, there's some flickering going on that you wouldn't normally see thanks to the speed up. But look at that. You can see all of the compression is gone in the second version of it. All of the, the large open same color space that was originally compressed. Let's take a, another look at this guy now, now that it's been converted. And... Um, yeah, it's hard to argue it. It looks it looks pretty damn good at 4K. All right. Well, we we probably should do a comparison, right? So we've done Proteus. I think we need to do Artemis medium quality. Um, let's take a little quick peeky here. So you can see that it's actually trying to do some. It's kind of like edge enhancements. For some people, that's what they want to see. They want to see better looking video, not just a higher resolution. So let's go ahead and process this whole thing, uh, the uh, rather the, the DRAC WAC here. We're going to process this in 4K using Artemis. And uh, I'm speeding it up here for you again. So this is five, five times speed. For those of you not watching that ETA clock, counting down there in the bottom right. Um, so you can see now, let's go ahead and take a look at what that final video looks like with Artemis versus Proteus. And uh, yeah, look, the, the edges look better. There's a little more definition in the faces of the characters. It's uh, it's hard not to argue that Artemis looks better. Um, but you know, we'll do the eye doctor thing. Uh, this is A, look at A and then look at B, <laughs> right? So we're gonna take a look here at Proteus again and one more look at Artemis to see yeah. All right. So, okay, listen, listen, you could be a purist and go with Proteus, or you could be looking for a little bit of extra definition with Artemis. I think, I think for the purposes of this tutorial, most people watching this are going to want to see uh, the Artemis upscale with some, some enhancements. We're going to go back down to HD though. I don't think that we are going to get um, a huge advantage by using 4k in this case. But let's go ahead and find the end of the episode. These VOB files tend to have at least one, sometimes two or more episodes, depending on how short they are. So I'm going to go to the end of the episode and set an endpoint so that we're only converting the, uh, the episode in question. And I'll tell you what, uh, Topaz is great, but it's not, it's not a great uh, nonlinear editor. <laughs> so sometimes finding the exact end frame can be challenging. Okay, so we've got the end frame here. Let's go ahead and process this guy. I think we're ready to go. We've found the best model. We've looked at him closely. We've decided on the resolution that we want to use, and we're going to go ahead and let this guy convert. Now, as you look at the ETA, it's going to be an hour, so we are not going to hang out here for an hour. We instead are going to go ahead and uh, let this thing convert, and then we'll check back in. All right, so just to remind you what the original source material looked like, the original test MPEG, this is what we had for quality prior to the upscaling. And uh, again, it looks, it looks okay. It looks like DVD, <laughs> right? This is what we'd expect to see from a cartoon on DVD. And again, it looks okay. Now let's take a look at the fruits of our efforts and check this out. I'm just gonna skim through the episode here. I'm not gonna play the whole intro, but just so you can see just what we're talking about here, it looks, yeah, man, Drag Pack has never looked this good. It's that simple. And I think the Artemis was a good choice. It definitely cleaned up some of the edges, especially when you see it in motion across a disparity of different scenes. You can most definitely see that uh, we've, we've gained some benefit here 
Uh, the material looks good, it looks clean, it looks new. A lot of that, uh, the artifacting from the compression of the disc is gone. I'd say it looks, it looks great and I think, we did a, I think we did the right thing with this particular piece of source material. Thanks so much for joining me today. Please, you know the drill, like, subscribe, hit that little notification button and we'll get more videos coming your way real soon. Thanks so much for watching and take care.